ministry is intriguing to me coming from the business world 11 years ago. Uh, it's treated like a business um, as we determine costs for building buildings or look for trends or determine direction and facts. But the difference is we go against worldly thought in ministry and we focus and totally rely on God. Or do we? Do I get crazy when someone unsubscribes or get a call from the police saying we are investigating you? Or do I turn it over to him? When I receive the cash flow spreadsheet, Kelly sends me and the numbers are looking really bad. Do I turn it over to him or do I, I uh, let it weigh on me? Or how about when I hear a church has decided to drop their support for ability ministry and they're going to put a bigger focus on Haiti again? Uh, I must confess there are times when the hair rises on the back of my neck and I get this nauseous sinking feeling. Um, and a flush does come over me. After a few minutes, though, I usually calm down because I realize that I am not the vine. I am a branch. Uh, Jesus said, if you remain in me and I, we, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Uh, so what if I just sit back and not encourage churches to reach out to the disability community or keep silent about raising money to further our goals, uh, to help the body of Christ, and taking care of those uh, who need us, who really need us. Uh, you see, that's what being a branch is, is really all about. A branch that is disconnected from the vine is nothing but a stick. I don't want to be a stick. Over the past several Sundays uh, that I've been in town to attend church at my home church, uh, there have been a few ladies that have adorned blouses with these big fluffy sleeves. I don't make fun of them or criticize them, uh, but it does make me think about the Seinfeld episode when Jerry's having to wear one of those shirts that have the puffy sleeves, and it's a, they call it, Kramer called it a pirate shirt. And he said, but I don't want to be a pirate. Well, I, I say this with the same indignation. I don't want to be a stick. I want to be a branch. I want to be connected to the vine. I don't want to do things on my own. Um, but to be a branch, I've got to have certain responsibilities, and I don't always know if I've done a good job of carrying out those responsibilities. I, I feel pretty good about uh, how I've done concerning uh, people affected by disability and, and some other stuff, but, but what about uh, things that are just totally opposite of the disability ministry? Um, I have turned you know, very much more patient uh, when someone stutters or gets in my face, gets too close. And um, I often run to the rescue of a person with special needs who's dropped something or has trouble going through a doorway or seems to be getting ignored in a crowd. But what about other places and other people? Our focus this summer with our groups are gonna, is going to be wreck the roof. And I just wonder, have I been wrecking the roof with everything in my life or just those situations that include disability. I love it, I really loved it when, when my preacher Kyle Eidemann talked about wrecking the roof in his sermon a few months ago. He asked the question, would we really wreck the roof? I mean, do, do we really do that? He went on to say something uh, like that really seems kind of crazy, like, like a bunch of rednecks. And he went on uh, to an app online to find out some of his friends' names that he'd like to wreck the roof. Well, I like my team, you know, and I kind of did that too. I like Ryan and Ron and Jason. And one of the things I like about you all is the fact that you're ready to wreck the roof and I'm there with you and uh, I can depend upon you. So I actually went to that app and uh, I found your redneck names. So Ryan, you are now Cooter Cornhauler. Jason, you are Billy Joe Tucker. Rana, you are Mary Lou Pigpusher. And I am Jim Bob Otis, okay? Uh, and if I have something to do so crazy out of the ordinary, I will gladly take Coot or Billy Joe and Mary Lou with me on that roof, okay? Um, because I trust you guys. I trust you guys to cover my back. And if I trust you to cover my back in doing something crazy, I also feel like I can trust you enough that I can challenge you. To ask you to do more than wreck the roof for people affected by disability, 
We need to really wreck the roof in all aspects of our lives. People that we don't normally hang around, things that we don't normally do. And personally, I've been so obsessed <clears throat> with the special needs that I, I've missed a lot of things that I should be doing. I have been so focused on situations surrounding disability that I have totally forgotten about other things. James 4.17 is very clear that if we know the right thing to do and not do it, it's, it's sin for us. How can I possibly pray to God to bless this ministry when I don't do the simple things I know I should do for those situations and people that are not connected with disability? Simple things like having patience in a checkout line. I'm not good at that. Not going ballistic when somebody pulls out in front of me or somebody practically backs out in front of me because they're dealing with the cigarette at hand and they can't turn around and look because they're too old and they can't see over the top of the steering wheel anyway. Or getting aggravated at the smallest inconvenience. To get angry at a church that refuses to accept those that seem weak but are indispensable. The only way for us to get deeper uh, is to look deep inside. You know, I, I'm not sure if it has been the teaching that I'm receiving or the sermons that I've been listening to online, the, the Bible reading or prayer life, but over the past six months, I have I've grown closer to God, probably closer than I've ever been in my life. And so my challenge to you is, is to partner with me and go deeper. Let's get deeper than we ever have been before, closer than we've ever imagined, because Ability Ministry needs us to do that. If we fail on this part, then how can we expect God to bless us if we continue to ask for blessings, but yet we're only focused in one area? We as leaders in this movement to lead the disability community of Christ must be the, the example of giving deeper and, and getting closer. Praying for goals that are unattainable on our own. I mean, we gotta pray for things that are totally unattainable that we cannot do on our, for ourselves. But God will change the lives with many if we do those goals and, and allow him to take a hold. And it'll affect the lives of people with disability. It'll affect the lives of people who have no idea what disability means. Ability ministry is not about me taking care of people or raising funds to help churches achieve disability outreach. Ability ministry should be truly about discipleship, changing everybody's heart everybody's closeness to God. Our purpose on this earth is to share Christ, whether that's a resident, non-resident, church leader, neighbor, family, friend. Will they experience life everlasting or will they experience death? They will do one or the other. There's no question about that. They're either going to heaven or going to hell. Uh, and we need to lead people. We can never win people to Christ. That's between Christ and them. So I challenge you to go deeper in every aspect of your life. Follow 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. It's a good place to start. Be joyful always. Pray continually. And be thankful in every circumstance, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. If we as a team get so focused on going deeper and closer, I believe we will experience God's blessings to the fullest and, and many will see Christ in us and want to get and really want to get what we've got. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for loving us. Father, because there's so much we can not do. We can try very hard to provide the utmost care but even in situations like Ron and I talked about today with some of our residents, without your guidance and your comfort and your leading, uh, it just makes it difficult to love them. We can pray for blessings upon this ministry that churches all over the world will understand that their responsibility is to win people to Christ, which totally includes disability. So Father, help us though to continue to ask for blessings, but help us go deeper. Help us say, God, we're in it with you. We're not gonna be the ones to make it happen. We're going to be the ones to 
work as hard as we can and let you be the buyer. Thank you, Father. Be with us. Help us to continue to, to push a relationship with Christ for every single person. Amen.